Honor. This is case number 21 CF 1848, State of Wisconsin v. Darrell Brooks. So this is the suspect, Daryl Brooks Jr., 39-year-old man from Waukesha, Wisconsin, who is a suspect in the Waukesha Christmas Parade Massacre that killed six people and injured over 60 people. This man had a long history of violent attacks, domestic violence, sexual assault, child molestation. He's a rapper. He promotes BLM rhetoric and has also promoted black Hebrew Israelite falsehoods. So Daryl Brooks Jr.'s social media pages is his rap name, Math Boy Fly. This cat was a promoter of BLM, a hater of cops, as you can see here in this Facebook post. And he shared a Facebook post that suggests that Hitler believed that the real Jews are black. So he's promoting black Hebrew Israelite pseudo stories. As a former Hebrew Israelite myself, I've seen this post before circulating on Facebook for years. And how do you know it's fake? It's because it doesn't have any citation. Where do they get this information from? So this alleged Adolf Hitler quote suggests that he's prophesying that blacks in America will cause World War III by this very message that he's stating to a soldier of his that the real Jews are black and that in the future this would be shared through this very Facebook post. And it has a lot of conspiratorial language in there. It speaks about the Illuminati. Black Hebrew Israelites find some type of alliance with Hitler because they both hate the Jews. Daryl Brooks Jr. reminds me of David Anderson, who was a black Hebrew Israelite who shot up a Jewish market and killed four people back in 2019, which is a hate crime. This is black nationalism, but it looks like left-wing media, the mass media hasn't picked up that this cat was a black supremacist, which would qualify this as a hate crime. So let's see if they catch up on that. Before it even came out that this guy was an Israelite or a black supremacist, and black Hebrew Israelites are celebrating this. Here's a BLM activist celebrating this and calling this a revolution. Self-proclaimed battle rapper slash militant Black Lives Matter activist Young Maze isn't exactly helping after a video emerged of him at the scene of the parade streaming live to Facebook saying it sounds possible the revolution has started. I don't know. Now we'll have to wait and see because they did. They do have some money in custody. We may have to wait and see what they say about why this happened. But it sounds like possible that the revolution has started in Wisconsin. I mean, imagine if the races were reversed. See, BLM constantly gets away with being violent. Black people constantly get away with being racist. Co-founder of BLM's Greater New York chapter, Hawk Newsom, saying this after a heated meeting with Adams at Brooklyn Borough Hall. 
If they think that they're going to go back to the old ways of policing, then we are going to take to the streets again. There will be riots, there will be fire, and there will be bloodshed. Leaders of the Black Lives Matter movement threatening violence on New York City streets if Mayor-elect Eric Adams reinstates the NYPD's controversial anti-crime unit when he takes office next year. I don't give a damn if they burn down Target. Because Target should be on the streets with us, calling for the justice that our people deserve. Don't talk to us about looting. Y'all are the looters. America has looted black people. America looted the Native Americans when they first came here. So looting is what you do. We learned it from you. We learned violence from you. We learned violence from you. The violence was what we learned from you. So if you want us to do better, then damn it, you do better. It's a perfect example of African Americans taking no agency for their behavior, for their violence. They could just blame it on white people and just masquerade it as activism. See, Tamika Mallory's a black nationalist. Her behavior gets rewarded. She got put up on the Grammys. You know, she gets deals with Cadillac. And BLM got over $90 million in donations, which none of it goes to any of the families of the real victims that they're parading and, sh you know, masquerading, showing their faces. This is fake oppression, fake activism. Black Lives Matter Global Network is growing, but this past year, more than 10 chapters broke away, citing a lack of financial transparency and organizational support. They also called on the executive director to step down. She resigned in May, she says, to focus on other projects. In 2020, it was able to pressure several cities to reallocate a total of $170 million from police funds to community services. Yeah, this was a disastrous policy that led to increased murder rates in multiple different cities across the country. And largely the victims of those increased murder rates were black people themselves. So this was an absolute disaster. And its PAC endorsed 44 winning candidates and ballot measures and the foundation dispersed nearly 22 million in grants. Again, what Vice is championing here is the endorsement of political candidates with their super PAC. I didn't think that this was about getting left-wing progressives elected to Congress, but apparently that's what it's about. And by the way, I did think that I knew that the whole time. This was obviously a politically motivated movement. You're known to be a racist if you won't say Black Lives Matter. And that really tells it all. It's just a way to label people racist for not getting on board with your political ideology. This is a Martin Bailey. They say, oh, well, you gotta say Black Lives Matter. Otherwise, you're literally saying Black people's lives don't matter. Matter, and then you say it and then they're like, oh, I guess you endorse all of our political stuff. Look at how many people support our political goals that are incredibly unpopular nationwide. This is the game that they're playing. It's not hard to see. She just showed you it. Does Black Lives Matter ever raise money for families or give money directly to families? So we never, not once have ever, ever, ever done a fundraiser on behalf of families. What we will do is take their GoFundMe accounts and post them on our social media platforms. But these are their GoFundMe accounts because we want to make sure that the money is never touched by the hands of Black Lives Matter. Now that's actually really smart. And it just goes to show you how legally savvy these organizations are because you never want to be in charge as an organization or an individual of somebody else's money that's being raised by the public. When people donate towards Black Lives Matter, do you think it's a misconception that people think it does go directly to families? So we say straight up, like when you donate to Black Lives Matter, you are donating for the organizing work. You are donating for our advocacy work. You're donating uh, for things like having a sound system, um, for things like making sure that there is food at uh, meetings. But we're not a social service organization. We are a power building organization. There they say it clear as day. Black Lives Matter doesn't actually help the individuals. That's not what their fundraising is for. It's actually a good question by the vice reporter. Credit where credit is due that she was asking, don't you think that people are under the impression when you do a fundraiser and you use the face of somebody killed by the police, that part of that money is going to members of the family that you're using their kid for your fundraiser like doesn't doesn't that make sense in march simpson and samaria rice the mother of tamir rice who was killed by police in 2014 put out a joint statement they demanded that high profile activists including blm leaders stop monopolizing and capitalizing our fight for justice and human rights now vice just tried to slip something by us and i am not gonna let that go unaddressed Vice referenced the statement that her and Tamir Rice's mother released against Black Lives Matter, but they don't go into it more than just showing you the headline. 
we're not going to play that game. We're going to read this statement just so you can get an idea of how the families of these people who are killed by the police actually feel about the organization. After Tamir and Richard were murdered, when we had to bury our sons, we didn't see black lives or matter. Our DNA changed when our sons were murdered. It took the breath out of our bodies. When y'all go home, y'all chant Black Lives Matter. When we go home, we miss our sons. We don't need y'all to stand in front of us to tell our story. We need y'all to stand in back of us and lift us up. If your agenda is not about helping our children, men, and women, then get out of our way. Enough is enough. We released a public statement that expressed our concerns with Tamika Mallory, Sean King, Benjamin Crump, Lee Merritt, Patrice Cullors, Melina Abdullah, and the Black Lives Matter Global Network Foundation to stop capitalizing off our loved ones and we call on people to join our fight for accountability. Tamika Mallory, Sean King, Benjamin Crump, Lee Merritt, Patrice Cullors, Melina Abdullah, and the Black Lives Matter Global Network need to step down and stand back and stop monopolizing and capitalizing our fight for justice and human rights. We never hired them to be the representatives in the fight for justice for our dead loved ones murdered by the police. These, quote, activists have events in our cities and have not given us anything substantial for using our loved ones' images and names on their flyers. The attorneys in our fight are also misleading the impacted families. In the case of Tamir Rice, it was even questionable as to whether Benjamin Crump knew the laws in depth in the state of Ohio. I fired him six to eight months into Tamir's case. We don't want or need y'all parading in the streets, accumulating donations, platforms, movie deals, etc., off the death of our loved ones, while the families and communities are left clueless and broken. Don't say our loved ones' names, period. That's our truth. What do you want from Black Lives Matter at this point? I want them to pack up all their bags and buy one of them big ass limos they be going partying in and shit, and make sure they put you up, pick, pick up every member that they know globally and ride y'all ass out into the sunset. I mean, Daryl Brooks Jr. was a man that should have been in jail for his own actions. He wants to blame the system, but his own actions put him in jail. He was actually released. So if you're so oppressed, why are you being released? And you got people like Tariq Nasheed who were jumping on the Kenosha incident with Kyle Rittenhouse, of course, and immediately label him a white supremacist. But you see, when the shoes are reversed, it's like, well, there's no signs of racism, but it's all over the place. And why is it not being shown? When the incident happened with Kyle Rittenhouse, people were jumping on white supremacists, racist, which there's no evidence of that. There was never any evidence of that. Even Joe Biden, the president of the United States, was calling Kyle Rittenhouse a white supremacist. Where is he calling out Daryl Brooks Jr. as a black supremacist? It doesn't matter if this guy was oh. black or white unless it fits a narrative for them. Right. If it fits the narrative, that's why we're talking about. guy that you have to be afraid of, which is what you're all being told right now. If it's a black guy, they don't want to offend anybody, and so they'll just cover that right up. 20-year-old James Alex Fields Jr. appeared by video in a Charlottesville courtroom Monday morning. Fields is accused of ramming his car into a crowd of counter-demonstrators in Charlottesville at a white supremacist rally Saturday. 32-year-old Heather Heyer was killed and more than a dozen others hurt. So in this similar incident, which was a clear white supremacist, he was held with without bond. But with Daryl Brooks Jr.'s case, nobody wants to talk about his racist antics and he's not being held on bond. He has $5 million bond. I mean, this is a clear career criminal who should have never been released from jail, but still everybody's talking about black people are oppressed, the system and yada, yada, yada. And in this case, you have anti-protesters showing up at a white supremacist rally. I wonder if people are gonna say, well, they shouldn't have been there the same way that they were talking about Kyle Rittenhouse, how he shouldn't have been there when he was the one being attacked. So, I mean, nobody's gonna say that, of course. People are inconsistent with their line of thinking.